All right, so we're going to continue on talking about electric potential, which we introduced last time. And we had talked about this example of a uh, capacitor. If you had a charged particle in the capacitor, and it moved from, say, A to B, some point A to point B, and this is the positively charged side or plate of the capacitor. Here's the negatively charged plate. And so there's an electric force pointing in that dire direction on a positive charge. That force does work, which is, would be equal to the force times the distance. So you'd have a force times a delta x. And that force, if this is a proton, for example, has a charge plus e, e plus e times the electric field inside the capacitor, which is pointing this way, times that change in position. And so we, if we then look at the system of the entire, of both objects, the, the, part, the charged particle and the, uh, and the uh, uh, proton, change in electric potential energy is the opposite of the internal work. So this would be a, a change in potential energy of negative E, little e, big E, delta X. But for the case of a, an electron, if you had an electron moving through the same region over the same distance, then the potential energy would actually go up. Okay, be kind of like throwing a, a ball up in the air because the force would be in the opposite direction of the displacement. So it'd be tending to slow it down. The kinetic energy would be, go be going down, but potential energy would be going up. So we saw in both of these cases we have this factor of the electric field times a change in position, okay? And so it's useful then, the only difference is the sign. So it's useful to then divide out the charge dependence and just look at a change in potential energy per unit charge because if we have it per unit charge, then we can just generalize it to any charge we would have moving uh, in between those same two positions. So we define this thing what we call electric potential or really the change in electric potential. We'll just be dealing with changes for right now. which is the symbol delta V being equal to delta U, the potential energy, change in potential energy, divided by the charge. Okay, so we have units of joules per coulomb or volts. One volt is one joule per coulomb. Okay. The, using this and using how, what we worked out for the potential energy, we found that we could generalize this and say that a relationship between the change in electric potential and the electric field is the negative EX delta X plus EY delta Y, we had motion in more than one direction, dimension here, plus EZ times delta Z, or more compactly, we can say it's negative of the electric field dot product with delta L, okay? I should say that this is for the case of a constant or a uniform electric field. But we'll deal just with uniform fields for right now. And the important thing to realize here is we're always looking at, it's a scalar. It's giving us a scalar like any dot product. It's giving us just a single number. It can be positive or negative, but it's not a, but it's not a vector quantity. We're combining two vector quantities uh, and we are and th those quantities are the field, the electric field, and the path. So delta L is a path vector. So when we're calculating a potential difference, you always want to keep in mind what is the path? What direction are we moving along a path? And what's the field? What's the electric field along that path? Okay. The path could just be any generic path. It doesn't necessarily have to be a path that a charge is actually moving because, again, we're sort of dividing out the charge dependence and looking at something more general. But there's always a path there that, that if, we had a, if we had a charge moving along that path, we could then figure out what the change in potential energy would be for that situation. Okay? So this is best if we, the best way to get used to this is to just try some examples. And so let's do that. So here is a region of electric field. Electric field is pointing downward 
Uh, we have three points, A, B, and C. We're just going to look at B and C for right now. And B is at location 2, 2, 0 meters. C is at location 2, 0, 0 meters. Electric field is 0, negative 300, 0 newtons per coulomb. So using this relationship between the electric field and the change in potential, what is delta V along a path that goes from B to C? Okay, so 65% says positive something and 30% say negative something. Signs are going to be really, really important here, okay? And we'll, we'll say a little bit more about this as we go along. But it's really important to get the signs correct. And so let's work out what the path should be and what, what the sign should be. Uh, the path, really step one in any of these problems is draw the path. Draw the vector from the initial point to the final point. And step two is draw the electric field, but it's given to us in this case. So what's the path? It points from where to where? From B to C. So I draw a path vector, and maybe just a path or a dotted line that has an arrow, from B to C. Okay. So I can calculate what this path vector is by saying what? What's going to be the path vector? C minus B, right? Final minus initial. So 2, 0, 0 minus 2, 2, 0 meters. And we get 0, negative 2, 0 meters. Okay, it has a negative Y component. It's pointing downward. All right? The dot product says, or the, the, the change in potential is the negative of the dot product of, those, of the electric field and the path vector. So we have a negative out front. We have an electric field that is 0, negative 300, 0 newtons per coulomb, dotted with 0, negative 2, 0 meters. And so I have a negative multiplying 0 times 0 gives me 0, plus negative 300 times negative 2 gives me 600 plus zero. But I have this negative sign out front, so this is a negative 600, and the units are volts. And unfortunately, the abbreviation for volts is V, which looks like the same symbol of, as the quantity, but we'll just have to deal with it. So it's negative. Negative uh, 600 volts, answer six is correct. Okay, so you've got to be a little bit careful about directions and signs here because they're going to be extremely important. Uh, let's try another one. Same looking situation we have now, the electric field pointing up. B is at 0, 0, 0. C is at 0, negative 2, 0. Electric field is 0, 400, 0 newtons per coulomb. What's delta V again from B to C? Okay, a little bit better agreement on the sign this time, but still not perfect. Most of us are saying it is a positive 800 volts. Again, path vector points in the same direction because we're going again from B to C, but the electric field points up. Okay, so our well, we changed the numbers here, but it's still going to work out to be the same path. This B was what uh, B was zero zero zero, and C was uh, zero negative two zero. So the delta L is still going to be C minus B, right? Final minus initial. So we have 0, negative 2, 0, minus 0, 0, 0. Okay, so it just gives us, again, a path vector pointing downward. Electric field is upward, and delta V is a negative of that dot product, 0, 400, 0, dotted with 0, negative 2, zero. And we have negative out front, zero times zero, zero plus 400 times negative two plus another zero. And the signs cancel and you're left with 800 volts, positive 800 volts. Okay, okay? so once again, signs got to be a little bit careful. Something that can help you, remember, there. Um, from, uh, from your math classes or from Physics 1, there's another way to think about a dot product. 
I could say that delta V is the negative of the magnitude of the electric field times the magnitude of delta L times what? What was it? The cosine. Yeah, the cosine of the angle between those two vectors. What's the angle between these two vectors? 90? One's pointing down, one's pointing up, so the angle is 180, around 80. Cosine of 180 is negative 1. Okay, cosine of 180 is negative 1. So if I did that, I would have a negative times the magnitude is, uh, the magnitude of the field is 400. The magnitude of the path is just 2, but the cosine of 180 is negative 1. Again, this gives me a positive 800 volts when I multiply the two negative signs together. Okay? So we can also double check it by looking at the directions. Here's another example. Okay, we have A, B, and C. We're going from A to B. A is at 320. B is at 520 meters. The electric field is pointing down. Negative 0, negative 400, 0 newtons per coulomb. What's delta V along the path from A to B? What we should be doing is drawing the electric field along that path, just to make it clear. So I'll draw it up there. Okay, so most of us are getting this. It's going to give you zero, right? It's going to give you zero. The path, and you can work this out two ways. The path vector is what? Delta L is equal to, what's the x component? 2, y is 0, z is 0. Okay. But the electric field is in the negative y direction, right? So, you take this um, dot product, you have E sub X times, uh, well, let's do it, delta V is negative E dot DL, E dot delta L, excuse me. We have uh, 0 times 2 is 0. We have negative 400 times 0 is 0. We have 0 times 0 is 0. Add them all up and you get 0. Okay, so 0 volts. Or we could... Do it the other way, the way we just talked about by looking at the magnitudes and the angles. We can say that delta V is negative magnitude of L E times the magnitude of delta L times the cosine of the angle between those two vectors. What's the angle between those two vectors, between the path and the electric field? 90 degrees. Cosine of 90 is 0. Okay, no matter how you slice it, you get 0. All right. That's kind of interesting that the electric field, if it's perpendicular to the path, gives you a potential difference equal to zero. Let's try another one. We're going from B to C. B is at zero, zero, zero. C is at zero, negative two, zero. And now the electric field has a, several components, an X and a Y component. What's change in potential, delta V, from B to C? All right, so we're getting this, right? The answer is going to be negative 600. The field has more than one component, but what did you notice? Did the x component of the field even matter in this case? No, because that gives you that when you calculate the dot product, the x terms are going to give you zero because you have a path that's only in the y direction. So Our electric field, point something like that. And what did we say B was? B was at uh, 0, 0, 0, C at negative 0, negative 2. Okay. So, electric, uh, excuse me, electric field dot, negative electric field dot delta L, is delta V. We have then negative of. Uh, EX, which was negative uh, 200, times the path delta X component, which is zero, right? So delta L is again zero, negative two, zero meters, times zero, plus negative uh, 600, or excuse me, negative 300, 
times negative 2 plus 0 times 0. All negated. So that's 0, that's 0. This is going to give us a positive 600, and then we multiply it by a negative sign. We get negative 600 volts. Okay? So all these little exercises here actually point to some things that we should keep in mind as we are doing these problems. And that's first, if the electric field and the path vector are in the same direction, then what, what did we get for delta V? What sign was it? It was negative, wasn't it? Because the, we said that the electric field was, the electric field was pointing down and the path was pointing down. Okay. Uh, the dot product E dot DL, if they're in the same direction, will give you positive, but you're multiplying by a negative uh, sign. There's always this negative sign out front. So delta V is less than zero. Okay. If the electric field and delta L are in opposite directions, then delta V was, what do we get there? Positive. Okay, it was something greater than zero. If the electric field and delta L are perpendicular, then delta V was zero. Delta V was equal to zero. Okay, so it's very easy to get the signs confused when you're doing the uh, doing the calculations. If you keep these rules in mind, it can help you check your work. Okay, now what is the significance of this? Well, again, think back what to what the definition is. We're talking about potential energy per unit charge. If you have an electric field, let's, so let's think about a positive charge, for example. If I had a positive charge that moved along this path and the electric field was in that direction, what would happen to the kinetic energy of the system? What would happen to the kinetic energy of the proton? It would increase, right? So delta K would be greater than zero, but the potential energy of the system would decrease, right? It would go down. So delta U would be less than zero. Well, if I take this delta U and divide it by a positive charge, then that gives me delta V. That should also be less than zero, negative, right? So if you can think about if about the delta V as giving you what happens to the potential energy in the case of a positive charge moving along that path, okay? Again, there doesn't necessarily have to be a charge moving there, but you can use the positive charge as a test case to, to think about the energy the change in the potential energy for the case of a positive charge has got to be the same as the change of electric potential. Okay? And then, in this, like as we saw in this last case, what if we don't have a situation where the field is parallel, anti-parallel, or, or perpendicular? If, if the field was like this and the path was down, well, you can still check the direction because you can always break up the field into components. You can say, there's a component of the field that's perpendicular to the path, and there's a component of the field that's parallel or anti-parallel, depending on the direction, to the path. The perpendicular component isn't going to contribute to the delta V, right? Because we know that any field direction that's perpendicular to the path gives you a delta V of zero. So the only thing that matters here is what component of the field lies along that path vector. If it's in the same direction as that path vector, you get a positive, or excuse me, you get a negative. If it's in the opposite direction, if you had a field like, uh, like so, then this delta V would be less, uh, excuse me, greater than zero. This delta V would be greater than zero. This delta V would be less than zero. So there's always sorts of ways to, to break up the uh, result to check it. And again, also the other way we can think about it is the angle. If that's theta, then we can say delta V is negative E 
times magnitude of E times the magnitude of delta L times the cosine of the angle between them. Okay? In this case, the cosine is a uh, positive, so you get a negative delta V. In this case, the cosine is a negative, you get a positive delta V. Okay? Questions on this? Let's try one more just to give us a different twist on things. Let's, let's see. We'll skip that one. Uh, we probably should. We'll maybe come back to this one later if we have time. We know the potential difference. If we go along a path from B to C, we find that the potential difference is negative 500 volts. What's the magnitude of the electric field? Let's see if you can work it out. You know the position of B, you know the position of C, and you know the potential difference. What's the magnitude of the field? Okay, so 250 volts per meter, we, we can write actually the sort of opposite relationship here. We can say that if we know the delta V is the dot product, then uh, you can also say that the electric field, uh, at least the magnitude, well, let's write it this way. The electric field is going to be negative of delta V, I should do it this way. If you have a, if you know the field lies along some direction, then you can find the electric field by taking the potential difference dividing by the path along that direction. Okay, so we're just using the opposite relationship here. We don't care about the sign, so we're just saying that the electric field in this particular case, the magnitude is just delta V over the magnitude of delta L. Okay. Okay, so that gives you 500 divided by 2 meters is 250. And the note the units here. Uh, because we can do this, we get units of volts per meter. It's the exactly equivalent to a, a unit of a newton per coulomb. So uh, we've been writing electric field in units of newtons per coulomb, but we're going to probably start seeing them in volts per meter. It's the exact same thing. One volt per meter is one newton per coulomb. All right, let's go, let's go back to this question. One more question. We've got a lot of them today. But this is actually a pretty useful one to do. We now have a path that goes from A to C. A is 320 meters. C is 800 meters. And the electric field has both an X and a Y component. Find delta V along the path from A to C. And this one's kind of useful to do because we need to we can talk about some different ways of doing this. Okay, so we're all getting, most of us are getting positive 200 volts. And so we can go through and do the dot product and we'll just sketch it out real quick. We have a delta L, which I can say is final minus initial, right? So I have 800 zero zero minus 320 meters, final minus initial. And so we have Five, two, zero meters. We're taking the dot product of that with uh, negative 200, negative 400, zero. So we say delta V is negative of uh, negative 200 times five plus negative 400 times two. What did I do? No, negative two? Thank you. Because we're going in the downward direction times a negative 2, and then plus 0. Okay? So what do we get? We get a negative sign. We get a negative 1,000 in here plus positive 800. And so inside the parentheses, I get negative 200. But then I multiply by a negative sign, so I get 200 volts. Okay. Now, it's a little bit difficult to check the result in this particular case because your path is going this way and your field's going that way, and so it's hard to see what, whether um, you know what components are perpendicular and what components are parallel to that path. We could work this out a different way, though. Do we necessarily have to choose a path that goes directly from A to B or A to C? What what other path could we choose? Okay, why don't we go from A to B and then B to C, all right? So we go from A to B. Let me erase some of this here. If I go from A to B, then what's my path vector? 
x is 5, y is 0, z is 0, okay? So I have delta v going from a to b. We have a negative, I have negative 200 times 5, and then 400 times 0 and 0 times 0. So I'm just going to get positive 1,000 volts. But if I go from B to C, what's delta L for that path? What's the X component? 0. Y component is negative 2, 0. Field is the same. When we go from B to C now, we have negative of, uh, well, is the, is the negative 200 going to contribute at all here? Negative 200 times 0 gives me 0, plus negative 400 times negative 2, plus 0. I get negative uh, 800, right? And then I can just add, add the two up and say that the, the total is when I go from A to B and then B to C. Gives me 1,000 minus 800 or plus 200. And you can kind of even see that coming out of the math uh, here. You have 1,000 here and 800 here from, from just adding those two components together. The uh, I know I haven't proved this. It works out, but I haven't formally proved it. But this is a useful property that's called path independence. Delta Vs are independent of path. Independent of path. As long as the initial point and the final point are the same, you can choose any path you want, and you've got to get the same result. Okay, it's, I haven't formally proved that, but it works out that way, and it's a very useful result. Um, the Another way we can write this, if I say delta V from A to C, now, as the delta indicates, it's a, it's a subtraction. It's a final minus initial. I can say V sub C minus V sub A. Well, I don't... This implies that there is a value for the potential at a location C and a value for the potential at a location A. How we calculate that is a different story, and we'll deal with that later uh, in the next lecture. But there is a particular value of the potential. We're finding the difference between them. So if I add these two pieces together, I can say VB minus VA plus... Uh, v C minus V B. V B will cancel out. We have positive and negative. And I have V C and a negative v, v A here, so I get back V C minus V A. Okay, so it, it, that tends to suggest that again, you can do this adding up of the paths and get the same result. Okay. All right. Um, so what we're going to do next time. So we've been dealing with constant fields. Next time we will take a look at how to deal with calculate potential differences when the field is not constant. And we'll do that on Wednesday.